Hello my friends, John LaRuffy here with another Straight Up Solo. In this episode, we are going to take a look at Sankore, the pride of Mansa Musa. All right, let's get started. Okay, folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. If you have, I do really appreciate that support. Thank you so much. Now, here's the deal with this game. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of stuff you can do. There's a lot of... Um, things that you can interact with okay so this is one of those games where the actions themselves are not too difficult to do but the breadth of what you're doing is wide and so what i'm going to do is this this is the way it looks um about three or so turns in i'm about to take the third turn of the um the ai the easiest ai and so what's happening in this game is you are trying to get these different prestige markers in four different colors, okay? And you are trying to influence how much they're worth by contributing books to the library over here. And at the end of the game, you are going to count the majorities, the most and second most in each of these three different bookshelves. The most will get two points, the second most will get one. If there's a tie, you resolve it to the first one who made the most to the left. And you do that three times. So what that means is, is that the most I guess you could possibly do would be six points per um, per prestige, okay? So like one of these colors, if it won, if you won the majority here, here, and here, that would be six points, okay? So somewhere between six and zero, because if there are no if you didn't get a majority at all in that color, then those prestige tokens are worth nothing. You get prestige tokens by gathering them from the board, also by flipping these prestige tiles over, uh, and uh, well, having a, um, a, a wall section on them at the end of the game and being the one who has the most in that spot, in that intersection, you can get them by promoting your students, or, I'm sorry, graduating your students into this area uh, and also from um, visiting these cities up here and doing these majority scorings in each of the four areas that will happen. And every area has an A, a B, a C, and a D, okay? Over here, it's A, B, C, D. Over here, the walls are A, B, C, D, and finally, A, B, C, D, okay? So this game is all about area majority and about, um, I guess, would you call it like token majority, okay? That's what the basic mechanic of this game is in regards to scoring. Now, how you do the game and everything else is a very unique um, action selection game. So what you're doing in this game is you're, you're choosing up the two actions to take per turn, okay? I don't know why, you, you're gonna take two actions per turn, plus any of the little bonus actions you might need to take, which would be um, resolving one of these objective cards that they also can give you some prestige, um, or trading some of these things in here to either move some of your students around, move them up, or get a, uh, a book, okay? And so that is the basic deal. When you take an action, there's five of them you could take. You can enroll a student where you're gonna take a student off this one of these four sections, and you're gonna put them below, which you can't quite see, but below this, uh, at the bottom of the map over here, or your player board, pardon me, and when you do that, you are going to be potentially unlocking some bonuses or triggering some area majorities, either for books or for scoring. And then you are also, uh, oh, so that's what you're gonna do for take a student, okay? You can in establish a class, an advanced class, by spending a book and taking one of the classes. You have to spend the book into the library and then you take that class and you put it on your board. There's some placement rules for there. Then there is, um, graduating a student where you look at whichever level they're sitting at and you basically contribute a book of that color to the library, take uh, the highest one you can take that's over here that equals their, um, their graduation level. And if it's not there, you can go lower and you put that student on that tile and that will give you prestige in that color. Uh, or exchanging a favor where you would uh, basically take one of these penalty tiles in order to get something over here or to the left of your resource token, or you can play, pay the penalty tile back. And if you do that, then you would um, not be penalized in the total storage of prestige tokens you can have at the end of the game. 
And then finally, the biggest and the, the way you do all this other stuff is teach a class. And when you teach a class, you take a student who is below one of these class tiles, you move them onto the class tile, you activate any skills. If it is a advanced class, any skill tokens you have that match the color, you get a bonus if the student tile matches the class tile over here, that will give you a bonus. And then you take the action in the area. So if I take this light green mathematics action, I will take the action over here. If I was to take this, um, this guy should be here actually. If I should was uh, to take this astronomy action, I would go to this blue area and do something. If I was to take the theology action, it's over here. And then the law action is over here. All right, and each of these actions has you do something to basically put tokens on the board in those four areas and that will contribute to the majority scoring and also it will upgrade your ability to take more powerful actions so you see all these numbers all over the place in order to get someplace or place somewhere or put something down you have to meet or exceed that number in knowledge and to get that you look at let's say let's use um, astronomy for a second you look at the available um, shared knowledge which is available based on what you reveal over here which is two you look at how much you've done already in this class over here your personal knowledge that'd be four and in this case if you were to teach it and activate the bonus you could get some um, specific I can't remember what it's actually called like bonus knowledge or whatever and that would make it five so what that means here because this is plus one you could take an action that costs up to five knowledge, okay? And so there's a lot of other things going on here with exchanges and such, but none of it's too ultimately complicated. It's just a lot to take in, okay? So let's go ahead and demonstrate a couple of these actions, um, and then I'll talk a little bit in general about the systems, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So the AI is kind of strange. They go through things, three different phases. Phase one is which I'm in right now. You're going to draw the card from their objective deck, and this is going to determine what their favorite discipline is. Then you put it into um, alphabetical order. It says numerical order. It is not numerical order. That's a mistake in the book. And you take this action. But before that, the first, well, you take these actions, okay? And then you'll teach a class in that discipline. So this says, take one of the students um, matching the discipline to the farthest right. Well, that's an orange. So that would be, there are no oranges in the right, but this one is the closest to the right. So we're going to pick him up. We're going to move him over. We're going to toss him in the bag because we're going to use these later. Okay, so that was the first action here. Now it says you're going to contribute to the library. He never spends any books over here from his personal library. He doesn't really use those either, as far as I can tell. These are just as a reserve in case all the library books get um, exhausted from the main supply. But he is going to then take an orange book, and he's going to try to put it in a spot that's going to make it the majority, sees the majority, etc. All right, there's some little rules there. But he's putting it down there because, as it stands right now, if the game were to end, this would be worth two points, orange. This would be worth two points, purple, and, or, um... I guess that's kind of like a red, deep red, pardon me. And then this blue would be worth one point, okay? So he put, he contributes that. Then he's going to go teach the course. Well, he's going to teach the course in the orange, okay? That's law. So he is going to look, and he's got one um, specific knowledge for himself, four shared knowledge, that's five. So he can take a law action up to five. So what he's going to do, he's going to pick this token up. He doesn't pay any costs. And he's going to try to take the best law action he can up to five. He'll first try to get a spot where he's got, he can get the majority. If he doesn't need to do that, or he doesn't beat me in a majority, or any of those other things, or some placement rules like usual, he's going to try to go to the spot that is going to maximize his knowledge, which would either be this five here or this five here. And if there's a tie, you go to the one in lower numerical, or sorry, lower alphabetical order. So he's going to place this over here. He does not get any of the bonuses for placing it. He just places it. And if there's a Sankori tile, which there is, he's going to put this face up on this spot here. And for as far as I can tell, he gets nothing. I wish the rules would be specific, and maybe they are. And if they are, let me know where, what page. I'd love to read it. But he doesn't get any bonuses for placing these. He doesn't get any skill activation, none of that. He just puts it down. And what that's doing is it's establishing his presence here, and it's slowly getting us towards the end of the game. The game is going to end when the 12th tile is placed in this area, 
the game ends after everybody's had an equal number of turns. There's not one more final turn, that's it, okay? Or the game ends when he's taken all of his actions. So he takes four actions in phase one, five actions in phase two, and seven actions in phase three. So one way or the other, the game's gonna come to an end like that. So his turn is over. Now, what can I do? Well, I, again, I have all those choices from the two different actions that I told you about that I can take. And what I would like to do, so I don't have any books in my reserve. I've got plenty of salt, decent amount of gold, and uh, two of these inspirations. So I've got a lot going on right now. And I would say this, in this game, it appears that the resources aren't that tight because you could always take one for a favor. Although you don't want to do that because it spends some actions, but there's, it's not a game where you're going to sit here and say, oh my gosh, how can I get this or that? It's, it's more along the lines of how do I influence the majorities to go my way for what I'm doing? That's the biggest thing with this game. All right. So what I would like to do, I believe, is I would like to place a wall, but I don't have any books. So the one thing I can do is I can spend as a bonus action one of these inspiration tiles right here, and I get a book of whatever color I want from the supply. I'm gonna try my best, because of my setup here, to really push hard on this uh, light teal color. So I'm gonna get a teal book, okay? And then I'm going to, that was um, not an action, that was just a bonus. So for my first action, what I'm gonna do is I would love to get some more of these tiles over here, but to get these tiles, I have to teach some law courses. I don't have any of those. So I guess what I can't do is, I'd, I'd love to put one in here as the skill tree so that as I'm using this, this thing, I'm, I'm gathering extra stuff. And all of these ways, are, are these, these skill tiles are ways that you can get these bonuses going as you teach courses. And that's kind of how you build your engine. It's very clever, I, I like it, it's very fun. But as you can see, I don't have any orange out here. So what could I do? Well, um, I could take the favor to recruit an orange from anywhere, but that just seems a little bit wasteful right now. Um, so instead, why don't I teach the course like I was going to and just not quite necessarily get everything I'm, I'm looking for? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to teach course. So I'm going to take this um, green guy and put him on here. There is no skill tokens that I have, or there are no skill tokens, pardon me, that I have to activate, unfortunately. But I do get the bonus, which is plus two for my knowledge of that. So it's two, four, five. So I can take something up to five. And what I want to do is I'd like to put it in a spot that would help me to flip some good tiles. Unfortunately, the fives... There are no tiles there. So I'm gonna have to fall back a little bit to the four. And I also have something that says, once uh, if I have two walls in, on the same number, then I'm in good shape. But also if I have two walls in different regions, then I'm in good shape. So I'm gonna put this on the four right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. That gives me an inspiration token. Oh, and by the way, I have to pay a book. So I'm gonna pay this book. And I want this to be a majority. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that right over there first. Now. I get an inspiration token, so I just use one to get it back. You can only hold a certain number of these things. Then I get the gold in the line, which is two. So I still have space for that. So that was my first action. Now, for my second action, I do want to set myself up, if I can, to teach um, some of these courses over here. And that can help, but I really need, I need the orange guy somehow. And there's just a couple of students over here, or I could decide to say, you know, I'm not too worried about this not being an orange student. If I just do an orange class, then I can teach him. I won't get any bonuses in this case, but I'll be in better shape to get my stuff going next time. Because I, re I really want to turn on the skills and I need to be over there. Plus, he has two majorities. I've got nothing over there. So that means what this gets scored here if he gobbles these up, well, I'm not gonna be doing so well. So what I will do, I will take another one of these and I will spend it again for a book. And I'm gonna spend it for an orange book. And then I'm going to um, use that to establish an advanced class. So I'm gonna spend this book. I'll put it over here. 
And then I'm gonna I'm gonna get one of these over here that um, eh, these aren't all that great. It doesn't really matter. They're both very similar. So I'm gonna get this class over here. I'm gonna put it like that. All right. Now that will give me the opportunity to teach an orange class, even though this color doesn't match. This pur purplish red doesn't match. I can still do it. I just won't get any of the special. Um, I won't get the extra gold and the extra bonuses here, but that's okay because I don't really need it that much. Now, because I did the establish a class, that was my second action, okay? So then we would go back to him. And in general, like I said, the game seems to take, let's just say, you know, 13, 14 turns, maybe a little bit more or less. It's a maximum, I think, of 17. I don't think you're gonna take any more than 17 turns with him, maybe 16, um, 16 turns, pardon me. Not 17, 16. So that's what's going on. Ultimately, in a nutshell, there's lots of different requirements to do to place your stuff in certain spots. When you place them in certain spots, you get benefits. Those benefits can help you build a little machine with skills or get you some area, area majorities or help you do some exchanges so that you can get resources. Um, but this game seems like a game somewhat of abundance. Like I said, look at all this. I've just barely started and I've had plenty of tokens here. Now, maybe it's abundance because I'm kind of scattering my way over places and things like that. Maybe that's not the best thing to do. But... The main deal here is you are trying to influence your the value of the, the prestige you want and de-influence or try to keep it from being so good for what he's doing in order to maximize your score. Because at the end of the game, that's all that you're doing. You're just looking at total influence that, or total prestige that you have. And you're using that from the tokens you have and the, and the, um, the amount they're worth. It's just, you know, it's X times Y four different times. Okay. All right. So I think that gives you a good overview of what is going on in this game. Let me tell you what I think about it. All right. So I will say, first off, I, th I think that Sankori qualifies itself as a heavy Euro game for sure. Okay. And it's, it's heavy in the fact that you have to remember a lot of stuff a lot of rules, none of this, none of the play is extremely complex, but there's just a huge breadth of things that you have to understand how they work. The rule book is laid out pretty well, but it's, there's a lot of stuff going on. The good news about the rule book is they did a great job identifying example after example after example, trying to get stuff done. They did a really good job, I think, laying out most everything. I have some, a couple of questions about the solo, like I said, that I'm going to eventually get resolved, but for the most part, they did a pretty good job kind of laying it all out. Um, now, the game itself will appeal to people who like heavy euros where a lot of planning and a lot of discipline go into each action. And I mean that because in order to do well in the game, you have to influence how much things are going to be worth at the end. Everything comes down to that. And then you have to make sure that you get a bunch of those tokens and you have to try to make sure that you are playing against the solo opponent. So they're going to be wanting to try to pump up and influence different things too. And so there's there's a bit of, okay, well, I can ride some of his coattails, but at some point you've got to diverge, right? You've got to try to make something better for you and worse for them. And there's, it's again, it's one massive majority style game. You're going to do a lot of different majority scorings throughout the game. Oh, and um, I shouldn't say a lot of different... Uh, you can do majority scoring throughout the game, but then it's also the majorities in the books. And there's other majority awards that give you uh, some benefits, etc., for the, the different books of different disciplines you get. So if all that appeals to you, you're going to love this game. That appeals to me a lot because I like... I, so here's the thing. It's interesting. Area majority and other things by themselves are not that enjoyable to me because it's been, I've done that so many years. But what the reason I like this game is it's very, very cleverly executed. There is a lot of stuff that interacts with other things. There is a lot to consider. There is a push on if I can do these things in this order, the net effect is going to be so much better. Doing the actions... Um, and there's always a, there's a there's tense timing to try to get someplace first because the not only do you want to take the specific benefit but there's also auxiliary benefits there's sankori tiles that can be achieved there's other kind of bonuses that you can do um, 
And then even as you line up your different students, you have to, sometimes you have to teach supported classes, meaning you have to have two students below a class when you advance one up to teach it. And then that will allow you to take the best of all the bonuses. Really cool and all of that, really fun. Also a very brain burning experience in a lot of ways, right? Because you literally can think through this game and try to do a whole sweeping amount of strategy, um, kind of all in one, you know, one series of different turns, okay? So there is, this game is not a tactical game by any means. Now, you don't know what the AI is going to do because you don't know how they're going to focus on one of their disciplines or another. However, it kind of leans into where it's going to go because those first four cards are going to establish the, the beginnings of what goes into the bag. The, the meeples that go into the bag, the students, are going to then lean even further into the discipline, so they're going to focus on it even more. And then at the very end, it's going to do that even further. So there is a variety. It's not predictable by any means, but I should, I, I should say it's not completely predictable, but you, you get a feeling if you're paying attention, okay, this bag is going to be mostly full of this. Or just the way the cards came up, it's a variety show. He's got all sorts of stuff all over the place. Uh, so you can pay attention and you can get an idea of what they're going to do and you can sort of hedge your bet on when you can see if he won't do it now. I can go do this first or no, I got to take this action now before he beats me to the punch. Plus, I can tell the way he's setting himself up. He's going to be more, he's going to score much heavier on the uh, blue or the, you know, teal versus the orange or red or whatever the situation is. So that can also play into your strategy. Either way, I think it's really, really enjoyable, really fun. It looks fun too. You know, I mean, that's the game itself is just is, is a great game. It feels great to look at, right? However, my one big deal is it takes forever to set up. It really is. It's like a 15 minute minimum kind of setup. Um, even when you know what you're doing, it's just you got to put a lot of stuff in the bag. You got to do a lot of things um, randomly. You got to set things in different spots. You've got to put all those little guys in your board in rows. It is going to take some time to set up. That is a bit of a chore. I don't mind the investment. I'm okay with that. Um, for the amount of time and fun and effort you get out of the game, I think it's worth it. But that could be a turnoff for some people. All right. And then the finally, it's, of course, a table hog, but that doesn't bother me. Sometimes big games need a lot of space. Or good games need a lot of space. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this review was helpful to understand if this is a game you want to acquire or one you want to pass on. Either way, the choice is yours. And whatever you decide to do in the future, I really hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.